So I have several patients in my clinic that have used low-dose methylene blue to treat their symptoms of ADHD. And these are people that have for a long time used stimulants like, you know, Adderall and others, and they have replaced them with uh, methylene blue. Now, this is not something that I have prescribed for them. Methylene blue is a supplement that is, of course, available, and I'm not recommending anyone to do this. This is not a medical recommendation. But it has been very successful in those people. And when we think about it, there's a lot of research to back this up. Methylene blue can greatly actually improve mitochondrial health, but can also help with the symptoms of ADHD, focus, memory, concentration. And um, it does it in a way that is not habit forming. It's not, it doesn't have the addictive potential that some of these medications have that we commonly use for ADHD. But beyond that, it might actually be very beneficial because it improves overall mitochondrial health and the health of the neurons of the brain. So it can overall um, stimulate brain health, while at the same time helping with the symptoms of ADHD. Again, these are very low doses. What we certainly see in clinic uh, where people respond is somewhere between 5 and 15 milligrams daily. Again, this is not at all medical advice. It's not study. It's not FDA proof for this indication. And if you decide to use this instead of your regular medication, if you have ADHD, certainly talk to your physician first. So have a supplement, and it actually used to be an FDA approved medication for certain uh, bacterial diseases. We don't really use it for that anymore that is so uh, immensely impactful, one, for the health of the mitochondria, but then beyond that, the symptoms of ADHD and, of course, overall brain health. And that's very exciting. And hopefully we see more studies that can, in the future, tell us what the right dosing is, what people are a good fit for this, and also then, of course, if there are any breaks that need to be taken at certain points. So I think this is very exciting research, and I'm looking forward to having more data on this to see if this really helps a population that's suffering from ADHD.